What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Invest 90L has been designated, folks. That's right. We have our first invest of the hurricane season. Invest 90L as it approaches Florida. Here's the situation we have right here. This was breaking news from just this morning. We've been watching this for a few days. We didn't make any videos on it because we weren't 100% sure of what was going to happen or not. But now we have our confidence of something potentially going to be happening. So here's the situation that we have right here. A broad area of low pressure over the eastern Gulf of Mexico is producing a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. This system is expected to move northeastward across Florida during the next day or so and move offshore to the U.S. southeast coast later this week. Environmental conditions are expected to be generally unfavorable, although some slow development is possible when the system is offshore the southeast U.S. coast. Regardless of development, heavy rain is already occurring and is expected to continue over portions of Florida in the next few days. That's why, right, I've been paying attention to it right there. We're looking at possibly over 10 inches of rain in some of these areas right there. I know there was a bit of controversy with the Tampa Bay not issuing a flood watch for some of these regions right there. But here's the, what we have right now. 10% chance of formation in the next 48 hours, 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. Mark it on your calendar, June 11th, 2024, first invest of the 2024 hurricane season. Many more to come, and we will continue to pay very close attention to this situation as Florida looks like it could be impacted. I mean, it already is being impacted. Georgia looks like it's a possibility. Same with the Carolinas. So we're going to have to pay very close attention to all of that right here and there. We can go ahead and try, uh, try and pinpoint at least what we're looking at with current storms. Invest 90L. This is what we have going on right here. It is producing very heavy rainfall across much of Florida, across Tampa Bay, across South Florida, around Miami. Not quite there just yet, but around Naples, uh, Golden Gate, uh, Cape Coral, all those areas right there, as well as the Florida. Florida Keys. So we'll have to pay very close attention to it as the rain continues to fall. I know a lot of people are probably excited that there's rain that's finally starting to fall. However, this is not going to be a, a more of a, less. It's going to be less of a celebration and more of a hey, we need to watch out for because of the possibility of some flash flooding that we have right here. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and check the National Weather Service website right here just to look at some of the hazards that we're looking at. Yes, here we go. We have a flood watch in effect for much of southern Florida over here, which includes areas of Lee County uh, in the Tampa region right there, Fort Myers. Here's our flood watch right here. Let's go ahead and pull that up right here and just to kind of give you what uh, something that we're possibly looking at right here. So here's the situation that we have right here. Flooding uh, caused by excessive rainfall continues to be possible. How much rain are we looking for? A forecast, uh, e uh, rainfall totals from the Tuesday morning through Wednesday evening are forecast to be 6 to 9 inches in southwest Florida and 2 to 5 inches over the east coast metro around Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties over there. So we'll have to pay very close attention to that. I also want to take a look at the flood watch for parts of, Col of Collier County and Lee, not Collier County, that's in so the southern Florida, but Lee County and Punta Gorda, those areas right there. So here's what we uh, have with our flood warning going on right here. Uh, the National Weather Service in Tampa Bay has issued a flood war a flood warning. No, that, never mind. That's not a flood warning. I meant to look at the flood watch. What are we looking at for our forecast right here? It's not giving us an exact amount. I wish, really wish it did. But hey, it is what it is. I've heard Tampa isn't really a good NWS forecast office either, so we'll have to pay a, clo a closer attention to it as more data continues to come in. So that's what we have going on for much of the NWS, and the reason I'm highlighting all this flash flooding stuff is because this is pretty relevant to all uh, to this invest that is currently organizing and trying to develop. It's I'm going to be honest; it's most likely not going to develop before it gets over to it gets to Florida. But I do think once it crosses Florida is when things start to get interesting, and we'll look at some more forecast models to kind of see what the consensus is in just a second. But before we get into that, I want to go ahead and take a look at the conditions of the, all the areas 
in question just to kind of take a look at the advantages, the disadvantages, all that stuff just to pay very close attention to that. So here's the situation that we have with the global sea temperatures. Let's go ahead and refresh the page and give you the most accurate and up-to-date wa uh, water temperatures right here. Here's where it is right now. Right now, it's over the piping hot Gulf of Mexico, 2930 plus degrees Celsius of water or 84 to 86 plus degree Fahrenheit water for those of you who live in, in Florida. Right there is, uh, I just talk Celsius and then Fahrenheit because those are the official units. And then we have, uh, after it crosses Florida, 26, 27, 28, and 29 degrees Celsius waters before it moves into cooler waters as it, uh, as it starts to move out into the, deeper into the Atlantic Ocean. By the time we get past this area right here where my cursor is, that's at the point where I believe that, um, uh, that in sorry, that organization and development is not going to be as optimal of a task for it, to, uh, for it. If it wants to develop, it's going to have to do it in the next, I'd say, three days or so if we want to see a named storm out of this. But there are some things that are limiting it. First thing that's limiting it, obviously, is the wind shear. There is a pocket of lower wind shear in this region, but across the Gulf of Mexico and across parts of the Atlantic Ocean, we are seeing up, uh, per, uh, up to 30-plus knots of wind shear across a lot of these areas right there. So overall, I'm not particularly th uh, that concerned as of right now, but I do want to take a look at the shear forecast with this as well, I want to take a look at the European model shear forecast to see what how this is going to fluctuate and how this is going to play out. Here is what we're looking at right here, 250 to 850 millibar wind shear. This is the shear forecast we have right here. Let's go for the next 24 hours. We do start to see a little bit of a break in the wind shear across much of Florida right there, but it's not going to be enough and it's not spacious enough to really call, allow for uh, extreme development, if you know what I mean. And then 48 hours out, there might be a uh, there might be a slight weakening of wind shear, but overall just not that fantastic looking into this right here. Although the European is starting to show a low pressure system off the coast of the Carolinas over here. And then 72 hours out, we do start to see a decrease of wind shear where it's going to, uh, where it's expected to move. At that current point, it, it, it's also going to just depend on how fast this thing is going to be moving. Because if it moves slower and it starts to impact these areas right there, it'll have enough wind, lower, low wind shear to kind of just, you know, do its thing and maybe start to organize a little bit more. But we'll have to pay very close attention to that, at least for right now. That is the shear forecast. I want to take a look at the moisture forecast as well. You kind of see what we're looking at. Okay, yeah, there's definitely going to be more than enough moisture for this thing to kind of feed off of. It's the dry air where it's at right here is west of the region. We can go ahead and show you the water vapor that we have right here. Yeah, there's dry air to the west of it right here. So that's why I'm not really I'm saying it's not going to really form over Florida because there's just dry air that could be intruding into it as well as some pretty insane wind shear. That's going to uh, you can visibly see on parts of the satellite map right there. So we'll have to pay close attention to, uh, attention to that. Uh, wind shear is once again expected to weaken a little bit as it starts to uh, move in into the Atlantic Ocean. We'll have to pay attention to that right here, but here's the moisture that we have for the next 24 hours. It starts to establish itself in a decent moisture pocket right there, although dry air intrusion could be a bit of an issue if it continues, and that's kind of one of the reasons that it's at, the, at a disadvantage, at least 90L. I'm glad the NHC tagged it just to make sure, but um, if we continue to see this dry air intrusion, I'm not seeing very much uh, happening with it, uh, with this, and especially as we continue to move towards the Atlantic Ocean, yeah, it's not uh, going to be looking pretty optimal, at least with Invest 90L. Now we can go ahead, I want to go ahead and take a look at some vorticity stuff right here. Here's the 850 vorticity that I have right here from the European. We're going to use the GFS as well, just to kind of look at, give a comparison for vorticity. It's definitely showing something there. It's definitely showing a broad area of rotation going on with it, but is it going to organize enough? Is it going to strengthen enough? Probably not at this current point, unless it starts to really ramp up the second it crosses out of Florida. And considering the global sea temperatures that we have, as well as some of the ocean heat content, which is something that I haven't really been talking about recently, OHC, at least where it's going to be moving is going to be pretty high, at least comparably to what we were seeing in years past. As it moves through the Gulf into the Gulf Stream right here, it's going to, going to be entering areas like maybe 75 OHC, which for this time of year is pretty insane 
if you think about it, because if we're looking at this last year, we weren't even seeing values over 50 in a lot of these areas on the Gulf Stream, and now it'll have plenty of OHC to possibly organize and develop if the shear calms down more than we were anticipating at this current point in time. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking at right here. GFS, we'll look at the vorticity with that as well. We'll use the 0Z to kind of keep the consistency going on right here. GFS vorticity has something organizing, has something start to really ramp up and develop. So we'll have to pay very close attention to that as time continues to go on. And yeah, we'll have to. And now, while well, that's on the while we're doing that, we'll go ahead and start looking at the regular models just to kind of show you what we could possibly see and what the aggregate's looking like. GFS has a possible subtropical or tropical storm organizing and developing off the coast of North Carolina, producing some heavy rainfall before it moves into the coast and then just starts to weaken and kind of meander and all that stuff as time continues to go on. European forecast, let's go ahead and take a look at that right about here. European isn't showing as much, at least with the 6Z. 0Z, it was showing a few signs of uh, maybe uh, maybe a low pressure system here or there, but we'll have to pay close attention to it. Yeah, there it is right there. We'll have to wait for the 12Z to come out just to get a better, better picture of it right there, unfortunately. Next model we're showing you is the CMC. Here is the 12Z CMC. CMC model, or the Canadian model, does have something maybe organizing or developing, but it's going to be in that four-day window. And afterward, it's not going to be showing that much organization or development other than maybe some really heavy rainfall across much of Florida over here. NavGem model, there is still some things that are starting to pop out, but we have enough information to kind of look at and see what we're looking at. NavGem has maybe a low pressure system organizing and developing, maybe a tropical depression or something like that. But op optimally, it's not in the right spot at the right time for things to organize and develop. Although the NavGem, interestingly, has a tropical system starting to organize and develop not too, lo not too long from now. We're looking at 72 hours out. We do have a tropical uh, low pressure off the coast of Belize right here, which if it continues to organize and develop at this rate, it definitely could get up to tropical storm strength before it approaches Louisiana. I want... I do want to take a look at the wind shear, though, because if it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be impacting heavy wind shear, so I don't know how much to trust this at this point, and I want to look at the continuity of it as well, because th this could be a situation where it forms in the eastern Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean, as the as the gyre tends to uh, do, and kind of tends to have lulls with. Yeah, there is some consistency with this, which is pretty interesting, so if you're on the Gulf Coast, you need to be watching the weather forecasts, and I'll definitely be keeping you updated uh, on this right here. So that's the NavGem model run we're going to look at now is the Icon, and this is kind of the other one of the aggregate that we're going to use. Icon doesn't has maybe a low, uh, broad low pressure system organizing and developing on 90L, but other than that, I'm not seeing too much. With that, uh, with that, unless it becomes uh, has, it develops some fronts and it moves through uh, Canada and those areas over there. So that's what we're looking at right here. I want to take a look uh, and see if we can start getting any of the fork of the mo models yet. Unfortunately, hurricane models. Okay, the European is giving us Invest 90L, which is pretty interesting right here. So we can kind of try to get uh, get us uh, at least an optimal viewpoint from this right here. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is a completely separate uh, uh, um, low pressure system right here, so I can't I can't really uh, use that at this current point. Last model I want to check before we go though is the European AI model, just to kind of see what they're saying with this, because this is a new thing that has been or has been developing recently. Yeah, the AI model, other than some heavy rainfall, isn't showing that much organization and development until it, either a moves into the Atlantic and dissipates, or B, merges with another low-pressure system, a med latitude cyclone, rather, and just does its thing over there. So that's the situation that I'm looking at right here. This is definitely something I am going to continue to pay attention to here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, as Invest 90L, like I said, is our first invest of this hurricane season, and that means that th much more is yet to come. So we will keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. 
be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us make more videos like these, and the goal of this channel, as always, is to get more people engaged with weather, and if you want to come help us out or just vibe behind the scenes and kind of see how these Pat's Path Predictor videos uh, kind of come out and and the kind of the discussions behind them, be sure to join the Storms United Discord server. The link to that is right over there. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.